Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make homemade bagels. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I'm really excited to share this yeast raised recipe with you for homemade bagels. They are actually much easier than you probably think, very similar to my homemade pretzels if you've made those before, so let's get started. Now the first thing you're going to need is two cups of warm water. You want this water to be between 105 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Any cooler, your yeast won't activate. Any hotter and you'll kill your yeast. We're going to add this to the bowl of the stand mixer. Now along with that water, we are going to add five teaspoons of active dry yeast and just a teaspoon of granulated sugar. Now we're just going to stir these ingredients together and just let it sit for about five minutes or until the yeast is foamy. So once your yeast is nice and foamy, we are going to add two tablespoons of olive oil and three tablespoons of firmly packed light brown sugar. And we're just going to stir everything together. Now the next thing you're going to need is six cups of bread flour. You're going to want to use bread flour because it's going to yield a chewier bagel than all purpose wood. Same reason I use this for my homemade pretzels. Now this is six cups and we're going to add one tablespoon of salt to this. And you'll want to stir your flour and your salt together. I'm using a pretty small bowl here so it's going to be a little bit tricky, but just so long as you get it mostly incorporated into the flour, it'll be fine. Okay, so now you're going to want to fit your stand mixer with a dough hook attachment, and we're going to turn our mixer speed to low. We are going to gradually add our flour mixture to our yeast and water mixture until everything is completely combined. My dough hook is having some trouble getting some of the flour on the sides, so now that I've added about half of the flour, I'm just going to pause and use a spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl and just try to work everything together briefly with my spatula. All right, now we'll keep going. Now, as with most yeast recipes, the amount of flour that you're going to need is not an exact science. So for this recipe, the consistency we're looking for is a very dry dough. You don't want it to be sticking to your fingers. As you can see, this dough right here is pretty dry, but I wanna get it a little bit more combined and check it again. I wanna get all of that flour worked in and then we'll check it again. This is still just a little bit too sticky, so I'm going to gradually add about a tablespoon of flour at a time until we have a nice dry consistency. And keep an eye on your mixer because this is a very stiff dough. It's quite a workout for your mixer. We're going to do a lot of the kneading by hand actually, so make sure you lock down the head and just keep an eye on it. You don't wanna burn out your motor. We're getting there. I'm still going to add another tablespoon though. All right, this is looking pretty good. It's a pretty dry dough. It's not sticking to my fingers at all. So we are ready to move this out of our mixer and move it to the countertop where we're going to knead it. I don't wanna go any further in my mixer bowl because I don't wanna burn out the motor in my mixer. So let me transfer this to my clean countertop. Now we're going to knead this dough by hand for about five to six minutes or until it is smooth and elastic. Now your dough should not be sticking to your countertop. It should feel a little bit dry. Some of that dryness will go away as you knead it, but if you find that it's sticking, you're going to want to add a little bit more flour until it's no longer sticking. And if you do need to add more flour, just sprinkle it over your dough and you'll work it in while you're kneading it. All right, our dough is nice and smooth and elastic, so we're going to transfer this to a large bowl and make sure it is a big bowl because your dough is going to double in size. And I'm just going to lightly oil this bowl with a little bit of olive oil. We'll drop this in our bowl, cover it tightly with plastic wrap, and now we're going to let this sit in a warm, draft-free place until it's doubled in size. That's going to take about one to two hours. Once your bagel dough has doubled in size, we're going to go ahead and gently deflate this. And I'm going to turn it out onto my countertop. Now this bagel recipe makes about a dozen bagels, so I'm going to divide this dough into 12 pretty evenly sized pieces. This is not an exact science. I have found the easiest way to divide the dough is just to stretch it out into a log and then cut it into about 12 even sized pieces. 
I found when you're shaping your bagels, it can help to lightly dust your hands with just a little bit of flour. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each dough ball and we're going to roll it tightly into a nice uniform ball. And just use your thumbs to gently work a hole in the center. The holes are going to shrink a bit, but when you first roll out and shape your bagels, you want it to be about two inches in diameter. We're going to want to transfer these bagels to parchment paper lined baking sheets. You'll want to put about six bagels on each sheet. You want to give them a little space because the bagels are going to grow. And one thing that I like to do and recommend is sprinkle each baking sheet with about a teaspoon and a half of cornmeal. This is going to keep the bagels from sticking to the parchment paper. So once you have shaped all of your bagels, you are going to want to take a clean towel and just cover the pan so that your bagels are covered. We're going to let them sit while we preheat our oven and while we bring two quarts of water to a boil. Now your oven is going to need to reach 425 degrees Fahrenheit. This is probably gonna take about 20, 30 minutes or so. And we will go ahead now and head over to the stovetop. Now some bagel recipes recommend adding barley malt syrup or honey to the water. I don't usually keep barley malt syrup on hand, so I'm not going to be using that today. I will, however, add some honey. We're going to be adding one fourth cup of honey to the water. Now the honey adds a little bit of chewiness, a little bit of subtle sweetness to the exterior of the bagel. But honestly, when I asked my taste testers, they really couldn't tell much of a difference between the bagels that had been cooked in honey and the bagels that had been cooked just in plain water. So this is completely up to you. If you are using honey, you'll wanna make sure that you stir the water and the honey together. That way the honey doesn't just stay settled on the bottom of the pot. Once your water comes to a rolling boil, we're going to uncover our bagels and we are going to drop them about two to three at a time in our boiling water and cook them for 45 to 60 seconds on each side. Boiling the bagels is absolutely critical. It's going to help make them nice and chewy. This is what makes a bagel a bagel, so you don't want to skip this step or you're just going to have round discs of bread. It's not going to be the same. Once you've boiled each bagel, you'll remove it from the water, let it drain, and we're going to return it to our baking sheet. Our bagels are almost ready for the oven. We have one more thing left to do. We're going to brush them with an egg wash, which you can make by beating together one large egg. Get that shell out of there. And just a teaspoon of water. And I'm just going to use a fork to whisk these together. You wanna use a pastry brush to liberally brush each bagel with this egg wash. This is going to give them a really nice golden brown color. If you wanna add any toppings to your bagels, you'll want to do that now. Poppy seeds, sesame seeds are a great option. Asiago cheese is fantastic. You can leave them plain. I love to do an everything topping, and if you actually want the recipe for that, you can just hop over to my blog where I leave a short description at the end of the recipe on how to make that. Today, I am just going to be using poppy seeds on some, leaving the other half plain. I would do all everything bagel, but I have a cabinet full of them right now, and Zach hates everything flavoring, so we're gonna give him a break today. Now these bagels are off to our 425 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven, where they're going to need to bake for about 20 to 22 minutes or until they're a nice golden brown. And that is how you make homemade bagels from scratch. I hope you guys try this recipe out for perfect chewy bagels, and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm. All you need is a little cream cheese, and these are perfect.